I finally decided to switch my FPV system from analog to digital. I picked the walk snail option because its recent launch of Goggles L and Gimbal GM3 are quite suited for FPV ground applications. These two components combined with the Moonlight Kit, Camera and Transmitter are the ones that I choose to install on my Traxxas TRX4. All the walk snail components came excellently packaged with a brief written instruction. The Goggles L, besides being very economical compared to other popular goggles, are comfortable to wear and offer excellent image quality with an ample gamma of settings. The goggles allow for sight correction through a generic lens frame to use with the specific eye correction lenses in case it is needed. As a temporary solution, I stuck my old lenses on top of the frame and it worked very well. The Gimbal GM3 communicates wirelessly with the goggles, allowing head tracking functionality in three axes. It provides excellent image stabilization and fast movement tracking. The Avatar Moonlight Kit comes with a 2.1 millimeter lens camera. It supports 4K of resolution and 60 frames per second. It features a starlight sensor to improve image quality and performance in low light scene shooting. It has built-in electronic image stabilization and allows gyroflow post-production processing. Supports manual shutter and manual ISO settings. The Moonlight camera has a 160 degree field of view. The Avatar VTX combines the video transmitter and recording boards in one unit. It can transmit in eight channels and up to 1200 milliwatts of power, depending on the settings and country of use. The first mandatory step is to upgrade the different components firmware. Otherwise, they will not interact properly. To do this, go to the CAD FPV page and download the latest firmware. It is also strongly recommended to download the respective manuals. Here on top is the manual that corresponds to the Gimbal GM3. These are the ones for the transmitter VTX and the Goggles L. Here are the links to download the firmware. The files corresponding to the upgrade of the VTX and Goggles L can be downloaded in this link. Those are the files that need to be placed at the root of their SD cards respectively. In the case of the Gimbal GM3, we need to download an application that is in this link. Click on the file with the Chinese label and then on the file label GM Gimbal. These are the two files that need to be downloaded. One is an executable file label, Gimbal Config, and the other is the firmware file. Now connect the USB adapter to interface your computer with the Gimbal. This adapter doesn't come with the Gimbal, so you need to get one separately. Power up the Gimbal, Connect the USB adapter to the gimbal and the other end to the computer and run the executable file previously downloaded. One unexpected issue that happened to me was that it opened in Chinese language and it was not evident where to set it up to English. Clicking on the various tabs, I found the one that changes the language. Select the COM port that recognizes the USB connection and you will see that the camera on the screen follows any gimbal movement. Finally, click on Open Tab to select the firmware previously downloaded, and then click on the Upgrade tab. A progress bar will indicate the status of the upgrade. In the links below, I include an excellent tutorial of this procedure on YouTube. The upgrade of the Goggles L is straightforward. Just copy the firmware file previously downloaded in the root of the Goggle SD card. Turn on the Goggles L and wait for the front light to turn on. Press and hold the link button on the goggles for 8 seconds. The goggles automatically restart and emits beep sounds. The beeping sounds stop after the upgrade is successful. The upgrading of the VTX is a little bit trickier since it requires a USB cable to connect the transmitter and the recording board of the VTX unit and it can be misleading the way to connect them to the respective ports. The instruction from the manual indicates aligning the white cable with a white dot in the port. However, it is equally important to ensure that the connector's tiny holes are aligned with the port's pins. This seems obvious, but due to the small size of the connectors, there is the possibility that even aligning the white cable with the white dot the USB connectors could be switched around, causing potential damage to the internal pins of the VTX ports. Now copy the upgrade file to the root of the VTX SD card. 
Power up the VTX and wait for the green light to flash. Press and hold the linking button for eight seconds. When the indicator's light turns red and flashes, release the button. After the upgrade is successful, the VTX light flashes green and the record light turns solid green. The USB cable only needs to be connected when upgrading. To connect the different components, start by removing the four screws on the back of the camera and detach the coaxial cable using a tiny flat screwdriver or your fingernail. Then connect the GM3 gimbal's coaxial cable to the camera, ensuring that it is facing in the right direction as shown in the video. Ensure that the camera moves freely. Now remove the cover plate on the VTX unit and replace the original coaxial cable with the gimbal's cable. Connect the four wires cable between the gimbal and the VTX. The red and black cables are for the gimbal's power supply and the gray and white cables connect to the VTX port for the head tracking functionality. Be aware that this time the white cable is not aligned with the white dot. It goes in the way shown in the video. Finally, power up the gimbal VTX and goggles. Short press the VTX and goggles linking button respectively. After the link is successful, the VTX light turns solid green and the camera image appears on the goggles screen. This is the holding structure to accommodate the FPV components. It was 3D designed and printed considering different aspects such as space, ventilation, protection, and anchor points. The idea is to make a swappable rig practical to exchange among different RC trucks. The design allows the gimbal, VTX, and fan with enough space to channel their respective connecting cables and have proper ventilation through holes and channels. The gimbal's position can be adjusted back and forward to meet any space required, especially when using the rig in the truck's cabin. The protection cage can be removed if having unobstructed video prevails over the risk of hitting the components with external objects or because of flipovers. One important feature is the channel left underneath that allows the rig to be placed in the truck's cabin using the lever that holds the battery of the Traxxas TR4, as it is shown in the next section. Finally, the FPV system can be placed on top of the truck, allowing for an unobstructed view of the driving path or under the truck body to have a more immersive experience from the truck's cabin. Thanks for watching.